Our story today is about a frog. Lots of frogs. It has a brown frog. And he has lots of friends. His friends are beautiful coloured frogs. Some are yellow and brown. Some of his frog friends are green and brown with stripes. Some are brown and yellow and green. And one is a green tree frog with black spots. But our brown frog is just brown. And he says to his frog friends, You're so beautiful, frogs. Can I be beautiful like you? No, they say, you're just a brown frog. You can't be beautiful colourless like us. You're just ordinary brown. Well, the brown frog, he was a little bit sad. So he decided to hop away through the garden and he came to a big house and he went under the door and he climbed up the wall and he found himself on a painting and he slid down the painting and he looked at his foot and it all had beautiful colours and he looked down on the table and guess what he saw? He saw lots of coloured paint all on the table. And the frog thought to himself, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump in all the colours and I'm going to be colourful. So he jumped into the colours. And as he jumped, he picked up colours and he changed into a beautiful coloured frog, a spectacular frog, the most colourful frog in the world. He was happy now and he went back to his other frog friends and they said, wow, look at you, you're beautiful, you're spectacular, you are colourful just like us. Now, as frogs were talking in the garden, somebody else was listening. Hmm, I wonder who it could have been. It wasn't anyone the frogs wanted to see, but it sounded like this. Meow. <gasps> it was a cat over here, hiding, watching what was going on. It was a cute little cat. It was the house cat that lived in the house where the paint was. And the cat had used its ears and it had heard all those frogs talking. And it said to itself, Mmm, I love frogs. I'd like a frog for my lunch. Delicious! Now the cute little cat suddenly turned into a nasty cat with sharp teeth and sharp claws and he looked at all those frogs and said Yum! One of you will be my lunch! All the other frogs quickly hopped away and they hid under the grass and under the plants and away all except for the little tree frog. She was too slow and the cat looked at her and said, yum, you'll be my lunch. Oh no, said the little tree frog, I'm going to be somebody's lunch. Just then, the colorful frog said, I'll save you. And he jumped in front of the cat and he jiggled around and the cat looked at him instead of the tree frog. And the tree frog jumped down and hid with the others. The colourful frog jumped and jumped and came to a pond in the garden. The cat followed but the frog jumped from his rock 
and he landed in the pond and he swished himself around and he twirled and he jumped and he swirled and as he swirled around guess what happened to his body? Instead of being a beautiful coloured frog he turned back in to an ordinary brown frog. The cat saw what was in the water. It wasn't normal pond water anymore. It was beautiful water. And the pond looked fantastic and colourful. And the cat was a very curious cat. And it said, I'm going to put my paw in the water. And it stuck it in. And it swirled it around. And all the colour went on the paw of the cat. It said, oh, I don't like it. Cats don't like water. And the cat ran away back to the house to spend the afternoon washing and licking herself dry. The brown tree frog went back to his friends. And they were all happy again. The brown tree frog looked down at his legs and he noticed that there was still a little bit of paint on his legs. He wasn't just brown anymore. He was still beautiful, like the other frogs. Now if you go down in your garden tonight and if you look carefully in your garden you might see a brown frog with beautiful coloured legs on his arms as well and maybe, just maybe, he might be related to the frog in our story. We've got a craft that we're going to do today but we're going to actually do it out here. I thought it might be nice for you to be frog and to jump into some colours with your feet and to do some prints all over the place and to put your hands in some paint and to do some prints all over the place. Storytime started in the school because we really wanted to share with the wider community what our teachers do every day. So in our early childhood area, this natural bush play outside in nature is a big part of their program. And we really felt that opening our doors and providing a program really targeting two to four year olds, that families can bring their kids in and have a look and a taste of what happens every day here at Carmel Primary. We chose to do story time in the bush um, because it was a great way in order to promote good literacy within young children. Um, it's a wonderful environment that the school has. We have a natural bush environment and wherever possible we endeavour to get the uh, story time out in this environment. And it's a wonderful setting to get kids to use their imagination, which is becoming a bit of a, a lost art in young children. Harper was about one, we started thinking about school and I was just not keen at all. Um, my husband, wanting to be a school teacher, was just absolutely keen on school and we had that, that kind of silent battle about to happen. And so coming here for Bush School changed everything because obviously number one is for her to be taught about God um, and so it was a given she was going to go to a seven day Venice school. 
but then coming here and seeing the atmosphere and the unschooling that it is, it's all about Mommy play and did. learning. Did. I didn't think I'd get it all in one. I heard about the story time through Kalamunda Markets when you did a story up there. So you're up there one morning um, with your crew and I think there was a bear dressed in yellow and he was quite happy with it and he's like, can we go to that daddy? So I'm happy to drive up here and come and do the trip to the bush, you know? Uh, it would be the setting. I absolutely love the bush setting. There's no other school that has a program like that. And we get to go for walks through the bush and do activities that are personal to the kids and yeah I just love that natural vibe about it. It's been really great to see my granddaughter improve her confidence and her independence coming to story time and I've really enjoyed it as a granny too. Now that story time's been running for a year we really found that the, one of the biggest benefits is watching the kids transition into school. As parents, they some choose three-year-old kindy, four-year-old kindy or pre-primary. And those transitions are sometimes pretty hard, leaving mum and coming to school. But the, the kids who have attended story time, it's their school, it's their teachers, it's their playground, and they just come along to school. And it's been a really lovely thing to see and watch and transition into school in such a seamless, happy way. Thank you.